Hi, happy that you are joining me again on another making of video. This time we are, as in the past, we are uh, sharing with you a couple of details on the actual uh, thoughts behind or the rationale behind the interpretation of one of the music postcards. Uh, as I was looking at the programming, I have already, I, I am, I think I have shared with you in the past that I am ahead of what is being published for one or two weeks and uh, we are already reaching number 18 in the postcards which is very good uh, means we are making progress and we are getting close to meet us halfway i am working on something that maybe i will be able to share with you soon but i need to nail down a, a good number of things before i can actually share something with you but I think that would give us uh, the opportunity of maybe meeting on a live session, but I don't want to say more because if things things does, uh, don't work out, I don't want to feel blame, uh, guilty for that. So, okay, let's, uh, let's talk about the song and let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, we are going back to Maria Grieber, of course. Uh, Maria Grieber is this, is this is splendid. Mexican composer. Uh, I have uh, shared with you in the past couple of details of her biography. Now uh, we are sharing the song Cuando Me Vaya. So meaning that I will be gone. Uh, if you have already had the chance of reading the, the, the details that I shared with you in the actual postcard, I have shared with you uh, my first thoughts on the uh, autobiographical uh, uh, parts of this piece it seems to me that in fact she is referring to the very likely very possible uh, situation of he of her being betrayed by her husband and that being the reason why he hadn't joined her in the US for a good number of years there is a uh, maybe I am mistaken but if I remember well there are about there are it's around 10 years uh, from the moment she left Mexico and traveled to the US and her husband remained in Mexico. The, the official version is that he had to remain here for the business and business and uh, given the very difficult political situation dur during or post-revolutionary years, it was hard for him to travel to the US. Uh, from the very first time I heard that version, the truth is I really never, I have never, never really believed that. My thoughts are that he he had to stay, yeah, for a while, but my thoughts are that he looked for someone else to be with. And it is after a good number of years when he reflects or when he, when he realizes that the woman he wants to spend his life with is Maria, Maria Griver. And uh, I am sharing with you all of this. I have also shared with you in the past that I don't like this gossiping that is usually around the composers and artists themselves i really don't like that you need to watch another type of program if you are interested in those things uh, but the reason i am bringing this up is because i really think there is some of that in this song she if you have read what i shared in the postcard she refers to well let, and let me i think that it would be a good time for me to put it on the screen it starts telling Fuimos tonto, tontos los dos, yo en adorarte y tú en recompensarme con traición. So, if it is a woman who is actually singing it, she says that the two of us, we were so very fools because I adored you, I loved you so much, and you, because you paid me with treason. So, her thoughts are that the two of them were fools, one for loving too much and the other for, their, uh, for his treason. I think that that's what sets the, the, the situation here also. And before we jump into any more detail, I want to share with you, I usually start by telling you how is it that I fell in love with this song. And I have to tell you that I really don't remember if I had heard this song before. What I recall is that as I was looking a couple of years ago, as I was looking for a score, uh, I, I don't remember what score I was looking for. Of course, it was a Maria Grieber's score. I, I found this one. It was an accident because I was just sharing. I was looking for another song. But I remember that it fell in my hands. And 
as a boy in a candy store or a chocolate store, I remember that I had I read the words, I took a look at the music and I told myself, oh my God, I have to do something with this song. So that's why I'm, I am not sharing with you any anyone else's uh, rendition of this song because I really don't know anyone else's prior to having selected for the selected it for the postcard and uh, as a consequence uh, later and uh, now later i haven't heard any others or have not paid attention to any others uh, but what we are going to do today is that i am going to be sharing with you the first piano uh, accompaniment that i ran into uh, which is very lovely, but I would like you to pay attention uh, because I would like to make a couple of remarks on this. So let's listen to it. I I will try to follow it on the on the screen. Of course, the piano lines. Uh, if you read music, you know the, the, these are the piano uh, lines that are being touched by, uh, played by each of the hands. But you will realize that there is. Uh, more music played than actually written on the score and that's uh, what I will be focusing on as we uh, end up listening to this one so let's go for it Si me alejo de ti es por complacerte, mas nunca dejaré. Cuando me vaya por mí llorarás y estando a solas quizá te dirás que injustamente la hice sufrir si por mi celo sentía morir. Cuando me vaya tal vez pensarás que otros amores sabré conquistar. Dentro de tu alma quizás sentirás los mismos celos que me hiciste pasar. Cuando me vaya sé que por mí llorarás. Por mí llorarás y estando a solas quizá te dirás que injustamente la hice sufrir si por mi celo sentía morir. Cuando me vaya sé que por mí Of course, I know you will agree with me that uh, this is an extraordinary, extraordinary song uh, or version by a pianist. I think he's a very talented, and I think he's a he. I may be mistaken, but I think it's a he. Uh, anyway, I will look for the reference to make sure. Uh, but at least the pianist, it's absolutely amazing. I think we can easily picture ourselves having a nice dinner with people we love, with friends, nice dinner, 
good food and listening to this uh, amazingly beautiful uh, music being played by a pianist live. I think that's like a nice way to spend a lovely evening. However, this is not what I actually used for the song. Uh, I did the first rehearsals using this one, but at the end I chose to use another one. And the reason is very simple. I think there is too much music in it. You may have realized that there are a lot more notes, the, the arrangements he actually did to, to make it lovely. I, I don't want to say that it is a, a, a version that I don't like because I actually like it very much. But I really don't like it for the accompaniment and moreover because I, uh, as I had mentioned in the past, I think there is too much music and Maria Grieber uh, never wrote with that level of complex, uh, complexity and ornaments. She was a much, she had a much more simpler style and that's what she actually did in her songs. So that's the reason why I didn't use one. But let me share with you, and you may have already heard it, I'm pretty sure that you have already, uh, sometimes when uh, one listens to the uh, uh, to the actual postcard and the, one is paying attention to the to, to the singing voice, one doesn't pay attention to the instrument. But at uh, this time I want to, I, I would like to, to pay attention or to notice the piano because I will leave, let most of it uh, in silence. I will be, reading the words just to give you the sense of what is the, the emotion in it. But I will keep my voice la, uh, low enough so that I don't interfere that much with the sound of the piano. And this time you will realize that the piano is very, 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 or really follows to what was written by Maria. This one is a more, um, this version is much, much, much closer to what her style is and to what she actually wrote. Let's go for it. Let's see, I think it's ready. Let's listen to it. Yeah. Fuimos tontos los dos Yo en adorarte y tú en recompensarme con traición. Si me alejo de ti es por complacerte, mas nunca de Por mí llorarás y estando a solas quizá te dirá que injustamente la hice sufrir. Si por mis celos sentía morir, cuando me vaya tal vez pensarás que otros amores sabré conquistar. Dentro de tu alma quizás sentirás los mismos celos que me hiciste pasar. Cuando me vaya sé que por mí
And yes, this time, this is really Maria Griver. That's exactly, exa that's exactly what she wrote and that's exactly why it's played and it is absolutely amazing. This song, besides being, uh, as I was sharing, you with, uh, sharing with you earlier, besides being uh, of some biographical content itself, it is also, there is a mix of emotions in here. There is sadness, of course, because sharing with your beloved one that my mistake was adoring, loving you so much because you paid me with your treason. I think, uh, in fact, that is something very hard to say. And it is not shouted. It is, in fact, very intimate, almost spoken, because you say, Fuimos tontos los dos Yo en adorarte Y tú en recompensarme con traición See, very quiet, also it is indicated as lento, because uh, one can easily think that you are upset and you say, Fuimos tontos los dos, and that's not the emotion that is shared here. It's very intimate and sad, but uh, uh, I'm going to jump very quickly to the end because there is something else that I want to share with you. If you have noticed the, the final version that I uploaded in the post postcard, I am putting lots of emphasis on each of the consonants here, because also if you notice how, how the melody goes, it, it gives a much more impact in, if instead of saying, Dentro de tu alma quizás sentirás, as opposite, if you say, Dentro de tu alma quizás sentirás Los mismos celos que me hiciste pasar Of course, I am exaggerating a little now, but, but, but I, want to, I want you to know is the difference. Of, opposite again as Los mismos celos que me hiciste pasar If you feel the, the strength the power of saying los mismos celos que it it uh, it of course uh, gives the listener a different sensation, but I also feel this is the right way of the, doing it because uh, besides complaining or saying at the beginning uh, that my only error, my only mistake was loving you this much, now she wraps saying. You are, I, you know that I will find someone else to love me and deep inside your soul, you will feel the same jealousy that you made me feel in my turn. That means in return, you will also be jealous because when I shall be gone, I know that you will cry for me. You see, at the end, it's like uh, an affirmation of your own security that you did the things right, I am sure that you will cry for me. And that's why I think the mood in the song, despite starting quiet and sad, at the end, uh, if it's still sad, because of course you're waking up with your beloved one, at the end, at the end, you are in this reaffirmation of yourself because you, you are the one who is losing more. Cuando me vaya, sé que por mí llorarás. When, when I am gone, I know you will cry for me. And there is one final thing, because you know that I like to keep it very close to the 20 minutes. I don't, I don't like to exceed the, the, that duration. Uh, this time I noticed, and you may have noticed, that I this part that I am outlining now, that it calls recitado, uh, it could be uh, in your language something sort of uh, declamation. I have uh, had, uh, I think I have uh, rehearsed these ones with a couple of uh, recitativos for opera arias, but never for Mexican music, and I recall that I like it when uh, singers uh, do this declamation or tell the story in a in a natural spoken voice instead of the imposted one when we sing. And it proved to be very hard. <laughs> uh, the challenge, I think that it was even more challenging than actually singing it. Uh, so the, the recite uh, part goes after the, the repetition, 
instead of singing, you say, Cuando me vaya, también lloraré. Si tus caricias y tus besos nunca olvidaré. Y aunque tan injustamente me hiciste sufrir, ya ves, no me importa porque fue por ti. Uh, to, play, uh, to, to play with the rhythm, the intonation and the intention of this phrase being a speaker of Spanish, of course, uh, analyzing what she is actually saying, uh, when I am gone, I know that I will also cry. So you will cry for me, but I know that I will also cry because uh, your tender and kisses, I will never forget. And even though you made me suffer this uh, unfair pain, this unfair sorrow, I really don't care about that because I did it because it was for you. So at the end, I am more than willing to pay the price. And that's the very beautiful song by Maria Griever. I really hope you enjoyed it the same way I enjoyed in selecting it, working on it, and now that I am sharing with you. Thanks to everyone and hope to see you sometime soon.